you today? Oh, hey, everybody. I'm good. I just wanted to give everyone some uh, some updates on what's going on. Great. So you want to do an update? And then I've got a question or two for you that comes in mm -hmm. uh, from a lot of people. So what is yeah. going on in uh, what is going on with all this stuff in the Congress <laughs> January twelfth? What is going on with that? <laughs> Everything. Well, in yeah, it, it, it's all in evolution. And uh, I recently uh, handed off to uh, the senior investigator for the House Oversight Committee uh, twenty three names of uh, top secret whistleblowers. Some are cooperative, and some would have to be subpoenaed. So we're trying to set up uh, a process so that the hostile, let's call them hostile witnesses, um, there, there's a CEO of a major corporation and others that need to be subpoenaed and brought in who have a very specific actual intelligence documents information. So that has just uh, happened uh, not long ago. And we're also in the process of meeting with people with uh, the federal law enforcement uh, and, and this is a, a sort of a big breakthrough where uh, there is a team that's been established uh, that is asking for all of the information we have, which is where the archive is going to get very important, the Intelligence Archive Disclosure Project, the Intelligence Archive, that has the information they need. What's interesting is that the head of the law enforcement division of the federal government dealing with this has reached out to uh, one of the special forces directors that are that we're working with and, and admitted they didn't have any actionable intelligence. They didn't have information on the programs, uh, who was involved, where the assets were located, and so on. And this has taken on some urgency. Uh, here's a heads up, broke, breaking news from uh, a very high-ranking uh, aerospace uh, operative uh, at uh, two black sites out west. Uh, who uh, got contacted me very recently and said, there are a lot of assets on the move. What do I mean? So they're looking at the covert programs that are being run illegally, know that the game is up and there are people on the hunt, uh, both on law enforcement end of it and congressional inquiries. And so there's a lot of kit hardware being moved right now, underground and elsewhere. And that's because of what's happening. So what I keep trying to say to the members of Congress when I meet with them is time isn't on your side, my friend. Uh, and of course, you know, the federal government moves of, at the speed of a glacier. But um, I said, these operations know exactly everything going on in real time because they monitor all conversations on the planet in real time. And they're absolutely uh, beginning to move assets. So it becomes really pretty critical that uh, people get moving very quickly. So that's what we're working on. Uh, but it's a very dynamic and unfolding situation. But it's very good news that the law enforcement end of division of all this are uh, really standing up and, and reaching out because ultimately it's a law and order constitutional issue here. And, uh, as I've said a number of times, there doesn't need to be any additional laws passed by Congress to pursue this to the nth final degree. Those those laws already exist. It's called murder, kidnapping, embezzlement of federal funds, uh, illegal operations here and abroad, on and on and on. So, there, you know, the, half the federal code of laws, criminal code, are being broken by the organization running these covert UAP, UFO programs. So uh, that's, that's something that uh, some people at a pretty high level in law enforcement understand, and a few, I would say a handful of people in the Congress do. Uh, I don't think that the uh, more senior people in the White House understand this yet, uh, but it's the military office for the White House does. So because I'm in touch with them. So, uh, you know, that's sort of a big development uh, in the last, uh, I would say, three or four days with the law enforcement teams being formed uh, and who are asking for everything we have in the way of uh, actionable intelligence, meaning names, places, details, documents, uh, the who, the where, 
And the who and the where and the what are very important because uh, if you've been tasked with this, even if you have the highest clearances, but these programs are beyond the normal top secret levels. I mean, they're being run uh, as a illegal, unacknowledged special access projects, um, not a legal one. There are legal unacknowledged special access projects, by the way, um, where the gang of eight and the Congress and the president uh, and, and his people and a slight number of a few people in Congress know, and it's overseen. The ones I'm talking about are not. Uh, and so therefore they're illegal. And therefore this is really a law enforcement issue. Uh, and luckily what we've done in the last couple of years is this has gotten on the radar screen from the Congress to the Pentagon to the FBI and to the other branches of the military as well of that it's real and that they're being excluded illegally uh, out of the chain of command. And, uh, and that's why they're moving uh, forward. Now, just as an update, about a month ago, you all may have heard that the part of the defense bill, the NDAA, the National Defense Appropriations Act, that left out the amnesty slash safe harbor period that was going to be in there, um, which the Congress had said people had to come forward in six months. Now, it may be put back in this year, but it was taken out by, I think, some people carrying the water uh, and covering who are in the Congress for some of the aerospace and uh, contractor giants who fund their campaigns. I'm not going to name names about it. It's kind of irrelevant at this point. But that's kind of why that failed. So in its place, uh, there just has to be an investigation. And then the law enforcement capabilities here and eventually abroad uh, will have to be brought, brought into play unless the organization dealing with this issue capitulates uh, on their own, which uh, seems extremely unlikely. Yeah. It's assets. We're talking man-made flying saucers man-made triangles, uh, sophisticated equipment, uh, perhaps some of the ET material and bodies that we know where they are. So th the issue becomes very quickly is that when they see the kind of game is up and this is moving, because they're watching everything and, and from their perspective of the covert programs that are run illegally, they know everything going on in real time and they have all these assets. The U S government is just getting its training wheels on investigating this. And unfortunately the good people who have been tasked with getting to the bottom of this don't have access by definition. They, they have, even though they're supposed to have a full access a point, you know, at certain members of Congress and committees, as well as uh, law enforcement, they don't because of the, the nature of these programs being very compartmentalized in very tiny restricted code word divisions and compartments that are completely out of the reach of the White House and the Congress. So I think that's the, the big problem uh, that has uh, become very clear and now they're trying to fix it. So, but in the process, as soon as that starts moving, there's a reaction. Every action has a reaction. And in this case, the action of the legal government beginning to move has prompted the uh, criminal secret government operations to start moving very quickly to further hide and obscure things. So this bit of intelligence, um, you know, I'm in the process of communicating to some key people up on uh, in D.C. because they need to know this is what's happening. So that was another question that that we had and that comes up a lot. Who are the people in who are in the government who actually are involved in finding out about this, who are interested in it, and who you feel like really are mm -hmm. doing this from the right um, mm -hmm. place and not to obscure mm -hmm. or obfuscate mm -hmm. things? Well, the ones I know and that, that I've been dealing with directly or pretty directly through their key people would be people like Senator Blunt, um, you know, Mark Warner, Senator Warner of Virginia, who's the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, 
Senator Gillibrand, who's chair of the uh, Armed Services, uh, Congressman uh, Burchett, who, along with Congresswoman Luna, have been put in charge uh, of, by the uh, chairman of the House Oversight Committee into investigating this, uh, as well as uh, uh, Congressman Moskowitz, who's from South Florida, uh, who's on the other side of the aisle from Burchett, but who also is, is tasked with this group in pursuing it. And in my conversations with them, they're very sincere. They're trying to get to the bottom of, of, of what's happening. Um, but again, they have very, very limited amount of information. Uh, and they're wanting to set up these hearings, including uh, at least it's been approved by the new Speaker of the House that they could have subpoena power. It was That was being blocked by the former Speaker of the House who was removed uh, a month or two ago. But the current Speaker of the House is in favor, apparently, of allowing subpoenas. Uh, and so this is what we've been asking for, because there's only a certain number of people who are going to voluntarily come forward. Uh, the more important uh, figures who are currently operational are going to have to be subpoenas and therefore uh, basically required to answer under oath. Uh, or face federal prosecution and, and, and prison time. But that is something which hasn't happened yet, but it's in, in discussions and what I'm hearing, which is good news, is that the resistance that had existed uh, a few months ago to, to allowing subpoenas to be issued by the House Oversight Committee is now uh, not the problem that it was. Now, of course, it, it ain't over it, until it's over, right? Till the fat lady sings. And as far as I know, this could change on a dime uh, because everyone thought that the uh, defense appropriations bill uh, was a lock, but it was passed out of the Senate overwhelmingly uh, to have this uh, amnesty or safe harbor period uh, for uh, corporate contractors to come clean in six months. And, but that got removed by some operators. So, you know, Politics being what it is and influence peddling in Washington being what it is in terms of, you know, I mean, there are two ways this is done. Oppo research, which means they get dirt on someone and use it against some kind of a blackmail and a huge campaign or, or other donations and funds that they make available to elected officials or even staffers in exchange for uh, killing something, you know, like an initiative of, like that bill that was going to have this uh, amnesty period uh, after which they would be subject to federal prosecution. Now, from a practical point of view, if you analyze this in a way that doesn't matter, because if the investigation goes where it should, by either the Congress or law enforcement, or if we can get our own uh, lawsuits going with a big firm we're talking to now out in uh, California, those really don't matter because they're going to be subpoenaed and people are going to have to be brought in. And on the case of the law enforcement teams, we're handing off to them the granular details of every underground and above ground installation uh, that we know of, not only in the CONUS, continental United States, but also OCONUS outside the continental United States. They call it CONUS and OCONUS um, for that. And so I think we're at a point where uh, those three angles, law enforcement, congressional, and then private, what we're doing with our legal effort, uh, may result in, in some changes here in the next few months. So did you hear anything or do you know what happened in the January 12th uh, congressional hearings in the SCIF? Do you have any info on that or anything? Look, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, say things that I, I, I can't share. All I know is that that was not, um, they, they did not have with them in there the the people they need to, right? Uh, in other words, the people who actually know what's going on. Uh, that list has been given to the main, uh, let's call them investigator and coordinator for the House Oversight Committee to pursue and have subpoenas. But that was that meeting was not about you know, pursuing those individuals and information. Uh, and the big problem is the people who 
get brought in to those sort of meetings, at the best they've been, except for the ones we brought from the disclosure project uh, pool of whistleblowers, which is 755 people. Uh, the ones we have brought to D.C., like the one that just came, who was a retired lieutenant colonel Air Force, who was at a Air Force base out west and handled, actually deployed and managed the pilots and the aircraft that are the man-made UFOs, you know, the the the, the discs, and the, the triangular craft and these things that are uh, from Lockheed and Boeing and, and uh, Northrop Grumman, et cetera. And, um, but he did this as an Air Force officer, fully read in. He has just come out of the SCIF, not that meeting, but uh, for the uh, Congress. And he has met with members of, of the Senate. So we had set that up. That just happened. Um, and uh, he is willing to testify under oath publicly, which is uh, a very big deal. He would be by far one of the most important people to come forward, given the operational and specific details he has. Now, there are other people we have who have more information, but they're not willing to, uh, they're currently in the system very high up, and they're currently afraid for their, their selves and their families uh, if they were to do that. Uh, so they're providing that channeling through, through me, frankly, that information. And, and they're willing even, however, to have a phone call uh, and remotely with the key members and investigators to give them the information. Uh, particularly the criminal activities that uh, we have just discovered in the last few months, dealing with the kidnapping of humans and use of, of kidnapped humans from impoverished areas around the world in uh, weird, um, what they call P3 uh, experiments, uh, uh, dealing with communications with ET craft using uh, human consciousness and technologies and unfortunately, drugs, uh, that program has gotten fully unmasked uh, to us and, and for us in the last few months, and that information has been handed off. Uh, but again, it, it involves a whole nexus, let's say a whole complex of places and operations highly compartmented. And so, you know, what our job is, and this is why we need more help who are people listening who may have information on any of these operations, either in the past or currently, is trying to put a million pieces together into a coherent picture uh, with specific information that the U.S., the legal government of the United States, as well as law enforcement, would have to pursue. So it's all about, you know, details and actual intelligence. But that is a big breakthrough um, on, on that front, where, where there are now people, more than one, cooperating from the same black sites out west who don't know each other so this is where you get good they're not colluding making up a false story they don't know each other at all and they're telling the same information but from different snapshots of operations that are compartmented in times this is how you build an absolute rock solid evidence case so um so that's uh, that's been a very big breakthrough in the last month actually with some of these new assets and, and intelligence sources. Mm -hmm.